Right, Matty made a big statement that in his opinion 2005 was the best year for gaming. So we set out to have a look at some of the big hitters from that year. But what do you do when you've covered basically all that you really wanted to and have kind of backed yourself into a corner? You soldier on and you cover games that probably didn't need to be reviewed. Oh yes, this time it's no different and we're taking a look at Burnout Revenge. I'm going in blind here as this passed me by unreleased but that was more of a question of series fatigue than visibility because although on Metacritic it is one of the best reviewed Burnout games it was also the fifth full game in less than five years. The saturation of Burnout releases was mental and it got to the point that Burnout Revenge, the fifth game in the series, was released on the PS2 in 2005 then released on the 360 in 2006 but Burnout Dominator, the sixth game, was released on the PS2 in 2007, but the seventh game, Burnout Paradise, was announced before Dominator in 2006 and released less than a year after it. So if any of the titles in the series get mixed up or blurred in your memories like they did with mine, you're not the one at fault. They are. They are for releasing seven titles in seven years. Also by now, there's been a Burnout game on ten separate platforms. Mental. What we found when reviewing these old titles is the partisan views of anything with a bit of nostalgia. So I find it's better to summarise the review at the beginning. I don't find I have a prescription for nostalgia goggles, but I can see why Burnout Revenge was near the top of the charts for the high performing Burnout series. This is the one. It has the speed, it has the controls, the content's all there, and the majority of the best decisions in the franchise are made within it. I've played the remake of Burnout Paradise more recently, and I think Revenge is better. I also played Danger Zone on its release in 2017, which was made by some of the lads from the first Burnout game and was supposed to be the spiritual torchbearer, and this was the entirety of my review. <laughs> Someone a lot smarter than me summed this up and they said if EA put this out as a cash grab, everyone would be absolutely livid about it. However, because it's from the original makers of Burnout 2 and all that sort of stuff, it's getting a bit of a free pass and I don't think there's much of a game in here. It's taking a extra you got in the Burnout games, fleshing it out into less content and that's the whole game. I'm not entirely sure if this is worth anyone's time. If it was free, knock yourself out. Paying money for it, don't even think about so it. So as you can guess from that, I think Revenge is also better. Let's have a look why. For clarity, I emulate these games when I go back to them. You may have purist feelings about playing the titles in their original medium, but I'm making this video today, so why shouldn't I take advantage of today's technology? You may notice that some of the textures do not load when it's emulated. Not a big problem for me, maybe a big problem for you, your choice. Also I don't know why, but when a game was released multi-platform, I like to play the GameCube versions. This wasn't released on the GameCube, so what we have here is the PS2 ISO on PCSX2 with all the filters and the options just cranked way up. This is an 11 year old game, but it doesn't look like one and it doesn't feel like one and I suppose that that's the greatest praise that you can give, even though it is being upscaled through emulation. As I have learned from many conversations with Matty, the textures and the content, it's all there to start. Nothing is being created. And when you emulate, it doesn't change things like the controls, the courses, the content, and the music. And the music is very important here. 10 out of 10. The first three songs I heard when playing this game were OK Go, Avenged Sevenfold, and CKY. Just the nostalgia trip is amazing. There's 41 tracks in total and almost all of them are great. The trigger and the controls that you would usually expect in a driving game to be the brake is actually the change track button and you can do that anytime. That was a great decision. You can say what you want about EA and on this channel we do say a lot. But they've never skimped on licensed music and they've always managed to get decent soundtracks into their published games. I did notice some familiar artists and tracks that are also in like SSX and Need for Speed games that are out at the same time. But that's no biggie really as LCD Sound System and Asian Dub Foundation are good. Although everyone always has issues with what they perceive as dumping on games from their childhood. Let's talk about some of the negatives. This is not to say that I didn't really enjoy this game. I did, and especially for playing for the first time, thought it was wicked. But the negatives that I see are to do with the choices that were made at the time with the design, rather than anything to do with the age of the title. Gameplay wise, this game is fast. Very fast. In fact, I would almost say that sometimes it is too fast. When it works, it is amazing 
engine. But once you're out of the baby leagues, almost every car is boosting to over 200 miles per hour. And as you hold down the boost button for basically the entirety of most races, let's just say the average speed you'll be doing in Burnout Revenge is over 200. You've got two angles to choose from, low and basically underneath the car. That means everything you crash into, you've only seen it once you hit it. When this is combined with the opponent's silly rubber banding, a crash within the last 25% of basically any race is fatal to your win. But 10 crashes in the first three quarters are nothing to worry about. When you're in front, you can be full boosting on a shortcut, perfect line, and you get overtaken. When you're behind, it's the opposite. In races, I can be absolute garbage and I can still win comfortably. I do get that this is an out and out arcade game, but not sure. The racing is also sometimes quite boring and this is especially during the burning lap challenges where it's you against the clock with no CPU opponents. You've got to be perfect in these and some of them are over a couple of minutes and it can be pretty dull repeating a time lap over and over and over to get the gold especially when the rewards are small another thing <laughs> another thing i noted down was bad branding so this is neither good nor bad here but what, <laughs> it made me smile like what is up with the branding in this game like i completely get that manufacturers won't want their cars in a game which is about crashing into stationary traffic but like, what the fuck has Gibson Guitars and Nixon Watches got to do with it? It's just so mid-2000s. And talking of crashing into innocent drivers, the NPC cars in this game are either made of feathers or they're made of steel. You hit them from behind and it's like you've got that snowplow on the front of the car they made in Mythbusters. But from behind it's like you've driven into a shrub in Grand Theft Auto. It seems that Criterion wanted the game as fast as possible, but then realised you would have to have the roads just completely empty, otherwise a lap would be 20 minutes. Like the compromise was helium balloons for cars. You do get rewarded with boost for hitting traffic that's in your lane, but you know I preferred the older burnout games where you had to use a bit of skill to avoid it. I think one last thing that I was just, I don't know, thought was a bit shit was there's just too many rewards in this game. I said there's a great soundtrack but you cannot hear it with like the pachinko machine levels of rewards and pop-ups. Some of them just say like, great, nice boosting, <laughs> way to go fast, and then like three cherries, it's just hammering on that gratification button. Racing was always the main bit of these games that the designers had in mind, but the average player, and this is talking about myself I suppose, when I'm remembering the Burnout games probably the best memories I had were of the challenges and just crashing into shit. Yeah, I take that all back now as I know I've moaned about it, but I really enjoyed the racing in this. The new Eliminate mode that was added is good. The uh, the Grand Prix, or as our American friends call it, Grand Prix, is wicked. All in all, it's a solidly good game. Those things that I remembered as the best, like the crash challenges, I now think are the worst. I mostly play them just to get the minimum score needed so I can move on to the next thing. So in summation, Burnout Revenge, excellent, really good, good on you. If there is anything else from 2005 we haven't already covered but we probably should, let us know. Uh, if you like gaming stuff, you, you know, you watch this video hopefully, so more of that on the channel. Subscribe, don't, have a wonderful day either way.